Okay, big O notation. The big O notation is a way to compare functions. Now, the point here is that running times for algorithms are often notoriously difficult to say what they are exactly. So you need to estimate them or you need to bound them. And big O notation is a way to bound the comparisons between two functions. You say that f is big O of g. Sometimes you just write f is big O of g, and sometimes you write f of n is big O of g of n. What it means is there's some constant so that the first function is at most the constant times the second one. Just a generous bound. So, so think about what, what multiplying a function does by a constant. Now, if you have some function and you multiply it by a constant, does that just lift it? No, it scales it. It scales it by the constant factor. So when you scale it by 10, you don't just raise it by 10. You expand it by a multiplicative factor of 10. All right, let's make a concrete comparison. So I've got two algorithms, algorithm one and algorithm two, which have running times respectively, and I just made these things up, 30n squared plus 150n log n. And the other one, the second one, has a running time of n cubed plus n. Which one is faster? Well, it depends on the problem size. If the problem size is 2, the second one runs in 2 cubed plus 2 is 10 steps. And the first one runs in 30n squared. Well, 30n squared alone is 30 times 4 is 120 steps, plus 150 times 2 times log 2. You know, uh, so the, the second one wins hands, handily. But as the problem size increases, then eventually the first one is going to be better. And it's going to be better from some problem size forever. The first one only wins, I'm sorry, the second one, the n cubed plus n, only wins when n is small. And so, mathematically, we can express this by saying the first function is big O of the second one. The first one is at most C times the second one. Can you tell me a value of C that will make F less than or equal to constant times G for all N? Yes, no, I'm. I, I, don't even, I don't even want to be that. I, I don't even want to. You see, uh, any answer will do as long as it's right. Somebody says C equals a million will work. Isn't it true that? If you multiply n cubed plus n by a million, then it's greater than or equal to 30n squared plus 150n log n for all n. So c equals a million will work. Now you're probably thinking that's that's a that's a little extravagant. You don't really maybe even a thousand will work. Maybe 151 will work. But I don't care. I don't care. I do care. I do. But in the sense of what this notation means, any C that works is good enough. This is the big O. I can scale the one function, and when I scale it, it's bigger than the other function always. That's what big O means. All right, there's another notation. It's called the little o notation. And if you have two functions, 
you say the first one, f, is little o of the second one. And, and as you might expect, it, the little o is going to be some, something like the, the reverse. It's going to say that f is smaller than g. But actually, it's much stronger than that. It's saying that the ratio of the first one over the second one goes to 0. The ratio of the first function divided by the second one goes to 0. Now, that's, a, that's an expression from calculus. This is a limit. Uh, this is a discrete math class, but still, we, we don't forget the calculus that we learn. OK, let's take some examples. Well, I'll use the same two functions. f of n is not only big O of g, f is little o of g. If you take the ratio of f divided by g and now let n go to infinity, then that answer goes to 0. So the first function is not only big O of the second function, it's actually little o. Okay. Now, going back to our table, if you take any two functions in this and take them in the order that they're listed, the first one is little o of the second one. If you take log 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 n and divide it by log log n and then let n go to infinity, the answer will be 0. So when you have an algorithm which has running time n squared and you have another algorithm, algorithm which has running time n cubed, when the problem size is sufficiently large, the one with running time n squared runs infinitely faster than the other one. The difference, the ratio in the running time can be made arbitrarily bad. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to run an algorithm which has running time which is n cubed when an algorithm which has running time n squared can be found. And that's why the boss was so upset. 